operations management project, we chose to analyze and assess Costa Coffee, as it is a well-known international business with great success. We found that a company with such a high rate of growth must know how to manage its operations effectively, and therefore we believe that Costa could be a model of business for other organizations in the industry. Costa Coffee was founded in London in 1971 by two Italian brothers, Bruno and Sergio Costa. They started as a coffee roastery in London, supplying local cutters. However, Costa branched out to selling coffee in 1978, and by 1995, the chain already had 41 stores in the UK. Now, Costa is the second largest coffee house chain after Starbucks and the largest in Britain. Our aim for this project is to analyze and evaluate the process types involved in Costa Coffee's production and distribution. And in order to do so, we have observed the operations occurring in the University of Warwick's Costa Coffee branch, in addition to the extensive research we have done. We will begin this video by analyzing what happens in the background, and then moving on to the processes that are visible to customers like us. Costa Coffee was the first UK coffee chain to control the whole coffee making process from start to finish. They source, store, blend, roast, grind and handcraft all of their own coffee. In the following section, we will talk about the processes that take place in the background and out of sight from Costa Coffee customers. Costa Coffee produces its coffee using a product layout and for the most part uses a mass process. The exception here is during the roasting process where the coffee beans are roasted in batches. There are four main processes the beans undergo in order to become coffee. These are sourcing, testing, roasting and grinding. All of the coffee beans go through these pre-arranged processes. There are two species of tropical plants, both bushy evergreens that provide most of the world's coffee. Coffee Arabica, which represents two-thirds of all beans in trade, it has a complex and balanced flavor but less caffeine. Coffee Canephora, which provides more robust production lines and avoids waste because of its disease resistancy. It is less acidic but provides a more smoky and terry aroma. Five years after planting, as berries ripen from green to red, the plant is harvested. Most berries are hand-picked, but in some places like Brazil, it is done by machines. Often only ripe berries are selectively picked. Two methods of final production. The dry processing, an older method where beans are sorted and dried naturally in the sun. It takes up to two to four weeks, but the beans have more body and less acidity. Or the wet processing, which uses lots of water and equipment. First, usable berries rise during immersion, then fermented and washed or mechanically scrubbed to remove pulp, and finally dry. This method allows more consistency in the end product, with less body but more aroma. Milling. Remaining fruit is removed and dry coffee becomes green coffee beans. Finally, hewling. Then they are cleaned and sorted according to size, density and color, and finally graded according to origin and quality. Then they are stored in a breathable sack and shipped across the world. The beans arrive in Costa's Roaster in London. The roaster works 24 hours, 5 days a week, producing 20 to 30 tons of coffee beans on a daily basis. The testing process is itself divided into four main parts. First, moisture analysis. Second, screen size analysis. This is to make sure that all the beans are of the right size. Third, defeat count. This is to make sure that no nasty beans are in the batches. And lastly, cupping. This is when the master of coffee, Gennaro Pelicia, tastes every single batch of coffee. One interesting fact is that Gennaro Pelicia's town is insured for 10 million pounds to prevent the possibility that the process breaks because of his inability to taste the coffee anymore. After the testing, all the coffee beans undergo the roasting process. Costa processes coffee in small batches using traditional Italian-style drum roasters at temperatures between 200 and 240 degrees Celsius. This process is slower than flame roasting and it requires higher costs. The roasters stop just at the point where the oils are still contained within the beans. This is a very high volume operation that produces very low variations in the product. Indeed, last year Costa supplied 464 million cups of coffee to its customers. And Costa's current roastery in Lambeth, London, only has a capacity of 11,000 tons, but they are building a new roastery which alone will have the ability to produce around 45,000 tons of coffee beans. There is a low mix of flexibility. The Mocha Italian mix is the only one produced so far, although they want to introduce new ones in the future. Therefore, currently, variety is low, uh, and this causes the low unit cost for the high volume. At the end of this process, the beans are sent to 5,000 Costa destinations in 29 countries, including India, because it has its own Costa production. Costa only produces its coffee from the very beginning, and conversely, it outsources all the other products that they sell in their shops. The company receives all the pastry and cakes sold in its shops from local family bakeries. They buy from them many different goods, including muffins, cakes, shortbreads, and biscuits. Also, the milk is procured locally by a cooperative of farmers in the southeast of England. 
Moreover, the paper cups used to serve the coffee are outsourced from another company named Solo, which produces cups from many different large coffee chains. The grinding process itself is done in store to ensure the freshness of the final product that reaches the customer. And this is done by placing the coffee beans that has been roasted in the roasting process and grinding them in a special machine that every Costa branch has. Here are six simpler processes of operations of Costa Coffee. First, customer comes and stands in the line. Second, the customer will choose and take food or drink from the display. Third, the customer will go to the till to order his coffee or pastry and decides whether to sit in or take away. If he has a penny to toast, he will give it to the person on the till. Fourth, the person on the till right away give the coffee order to the barrister and give the penny to the person who toasts the sandwiches. A number will be given so that he doesn't have to wait until the sandwich is toasted and it will be, ser it will be served on the his table. Fifth, while barrister is making coffee, the person on the till sets the customer tray like putting the right sauces and spoons for the cups in which the coffee is being made and at the same time serving any pastry in the right plate with the right cutlery. Then, the cashier at the, at the till will take money or card from the customer and complete the transaction. Coffee is made ready but the barista is placed on the tray or in takeaway cup and the customer takes it from the counter. Now let's move on to Costa Coffee's branch in the university. As we interviewed the senior barista of Warwick's Costa Coffee branch, we found out that they renew their food stock every day to ensure the freshness of the product. Their coffee beans, however, only come once a week. She also reveals that there is only one supplier for Costa Coffee's food, at least the ones that are delivering the food to the branch itself. Now from the information brought upon us, we can see that the operations involved is arranged in a cell layout. The food and coffee beans are processed in their own cells before transferred to Costa's branches, which is a cell of its own. And as long as there are no constant changes occurring to Costa Coffee's operations, the implemented cell layout allows the company to present its customers with a good range of product variety without compromising the speed of the operations. Now let's focus on the branch staff themselves as well as the operations undertaken in the branch. According to the senior barista we interviewed, the training to be a Costa barista primarily concerns the service time window, which is set between 5 to 10 minutes. It also involves the different types of processes such as the making of an espresso, coffee grinding, food heating, and so on. Other things such as a proper customer interaction training was also given to trainees. In a busy day, their job can be quite repetitive as one staff tends to stick with one task. Now this is a common case considering the service's product layout. In this layout, transforming resources are arranged to flow according to the customer. And although this process is quite efficient, they are often demotivating for staff and are prone to any disruption which may disturb the flow of things. However, Costa's training allows them to swap tasks occasionally, making the job less repetitive and demotivating for branch personnel. And the more rotation is involved, the less repetitive the job gets. Despite this issue, however, she claims that the process itself is as good as it can be. What may improve the status quo is perhaps adding more trained staff to the branch, which allows for faster service. This presentation explores the processes Costa Coffee uses to produce its famous Costa Coffee. The production of Costa Coffee beans and the Amoka Italia mix, for the most part, use a mass process. The exception here is when the beans are roasted, they are roasted in batches. While the cost of implementing a batch process into a mass process is costly and inefficient, it is vital for an authentic tasting coffee bean. Once the coffee beans arrive at Costa Coffee Cafe, they need to be transformed into the finished product, which is a cup of coffee. Costa Coffee uses a product layout to achieve this, where baristas become skilled at using one machine or process in the transformation of a coffee bean to cup of coffee. This layout improves the efficiency of the process, but it can be de demotivating for the employees as the work becomes repetitive. Many products in Costa Coffee's cafes, such as sandwiches and cakes, are outsourced and then implemented into Costa Coffee's product layout. Ultimately, Costa Coffee uses a combination of processes and layouts throughout the different sections in their production. For each section, Costa Coffee use a process they believe is the most suitable to create the most efficient production possible, except where they place more importance on quality than efficiency. However, there are still places where we believe Costa Coffee can improve their efficiency. For example, although Costa Coffee uses a product layout, the time taken to serve a customer is 3-5 to five minutes, which is time consuming for a place like a university where there is a high turnover, especially during peak hours. In comparison to Starbucks which takes 1-1.5 one to one and a half minutes to serve a customer, this is far more efficient. To improve this, Costa Coffee should redesign their service model and standards according to the location of the coffee shop to have more quick and efficient service during operations rather than sticking to old service standards which is more time consuming.